All right, we're good. Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrew Flair. I make fishing YouTube videos and like to teach people how to fish. Today I'm doing a seminar over catching the big one, something like that. That was two weeks ago in California, and that was seven and a half pound bass. So I'm gonna go over some tips and techniques to catch fish like that around here. So the first tip I have for you guys is using your resources. So instead of just going out to any random lake near your house, throwing whatever lures you want, you want to look and do your, uh, do your homework. A couple of places you can find some good information is the Nebraska Game and Parks, or if you're from Iowa, since we're in Iowa, the Iowa Department of Natural Resources. And this has a lot of information like where to fish. So maybe if you live by Lake Zarenci like I do, that may be the only lake that you really know of. But if you go to like websites like this, they'll give you a map of all the different lakes within the area, no matter where you live. And so then you can try different lakes um, so you're not fishing the same bodies of water. This is something I hardly ever see anybody look at, and this is called a creel survey. Basically what they do is the Nebraska Game of Parks, they go to a lake and they electroshock the lake to make the fish rise to the surface, and then they, they count the fish. They count how big they are, they weigh them, they measure them, and then they release them, and then they're fine. And so since we're talking about catching big fish, this tells you how big the bass are. So this is for largemouth bass, and then it goes smaller than eight inches, greater than 15, and everything in between. Um, before I go out to the lake, if, uh, if I'm targeting big fish, then you want to go to a lake that has a lot of big fish, and this will tell you which lakes have big fish. So something like Louisville 3, in the, I think this is the state of Nebraska, they, they rotate lakes, so this isn't every lake in Nebraska, but they rotate like the top 12. Louisville 3 has the most biggest bass out of this entire survey. So if I was going to go fishing, Louisville 3 might be an option. Walnut Creek, I've caught a lot of big fish out of Walnut Creek, now I see why, because there's a big chunk of uh, dark green, which is the, uh, that's 15 and over, which is kind of a big fish. And then again, on the other side, if you're just looking to go catch numbers and you don't want to catch big fish and you want to take the grandkids fishing or your kids, whatever, then you might want to go to like somewhere like these top three or four lakes that have just a ton of fish, but they're just not very big. And then lake maps. So if you own the Nebraska Game Parks, I was talking about how you can find the map of all the different lakes. Within that, you can find lake maps. And the reason why you want to utilize this is because big fish usually are kind of hard to find. They're, they don't just sit up right up against the bank, kind of like bluegill do or small bass. They're hard to catch, which is why a lot of people don't catch them. So you want to utilize a few different things, and that's when I talk about the locations on the lake. So I broke it down into spring, summer, and fall. Those are the months or the seasons that you can fish here in Nebraska. So spring, this is, so if you're fishing in the spring, which is coming up, so this is the stuff you guys want to remember within the next couple months. If you're looking to catch big fish, spring is by far the easiest time to catch a five pound bass because they, they move shallow to spawn and they're very easy to catch. A couple of different places you can look. So this is Lake Juan here, and I took a highlighter and highlighted different areas. The places that you want to look for are shallow areas next to deep water. So right now, all the bass are in deep water right now. They, they, they don't go shallow because the, it's, well, it's frozen right now, but it's really cold water. They stay deep, but as soon as that water starts to warm up, I say the shallow water heats and cools the fastest. So as soon as we get that 50, 60 degree day coming up in March or April, they're going to move to places like this, shallow bays like this, and places over here. This little squiggly piece of spaghetti looking thing, that's the creek channel. That's the deepest water in this lake. So this is where the bass are hanging out right now in the winter. And then once the water heats up, they start moving to the shallow banks just like this. Uh, one other thing to keep in mind, especially in the spring, is rocks hold heat. So if you're fishing and it was warm all week and you get to the lake the next day and it's really cold, you want to fish where the rocks are because the rocks hold the heat, which means that will heat the water around the rocks. Uh, so avoid trees and uh, grass and stuff like that because that doesn't hold very much heat. Uh, again, shallow flats, deep water access, like I said. There's, that's all the deep water in the lake, so you want to hit places like this, shallow areas like that. So now it's summertime. The bass, they were over here and down here in the shallow bays. Now they're going to be in that deep water where they are right now. When the water heats up, it gets too hot for them. It's 80, 90 degrees. They don't like that. They like the cooler temperatures. That's where the, the most oxygen is in the water is in the deeper water. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. uh, places you want to look is definitely this creek channel. That's where I fish a lot of tournaments on this lake, and most of the tournaments that are won with big fish are caught right in this little area. They're kind of hard to catch because there's a ton of trees, uh, but that's just a, that's a place that you want to check. And uh, offshore structure. So you don't want to just throw your lure out in the middle of the lake. You want to make sure you're fishing on rock piles, brush piles, um, any type of something that's down under the water. If you're on a boat or you can just feel it with your lure. And then points is another thing. So these, this little thing right here, 
this one that sticks out here, that one right there, those are rocky points. So the fish stay in this little area when the sun is high, but if it's a cloudy day or early in the morning or late at night, they move shallow to feed, and those are the closest, that right there, like that's the closest area to that creek channel, those little things right there. So you wanna go fish those points whenever you're, uh, whenever you're fishing, I guess, in low light conditions. Uh, channel swings, what a channel swing is, is that the channel, it'll swing like this, right there, and it swings like that. So instead of it just going in a straight line, it swings around. Uh, those are the places you wanna go because it has, it's deep water next to shallow water. Bass like to go shallow and they like to come back deep, but they like it to, they don't wanna trek across this entire lake just to go to the deep water and trek all the way back to the shallow water. They like it where they have deep water here and shallow water here. That's the best places to find them. And then 10 feet or more. So whenever I'm fishing and I'm trying to catch big bass in the summer, I'm always fishing in bigger, deeper than 10 feet. Uh, that's just where I just personally have experience catching big fish. Now that the summer's over, you're in fall. So the thing with around here is the fall is probably the hardest time to catch big fish here in Omaha or Nebraska or Iowa. That's just my personal experience. It's very tough. So I always say fish the conditions. So if it's cloudy that day, then you want to fish shallow water. You want to go throw top waters up shallow. But if it's sunny, uh, you want to go deep, which is kind of like this in the summer, this little creek channel. And I forgot to mention this, but if you look at these maps, they've got little fish right there. And there's a key on this map. I didn't put it on here, but that's called underwater structures, that little thing right there. So before you even get to the lake, you know there's a brush pile or a rock pile there. You don't have to have a depth finder to find that. So again, low, low lake conditions, you want to try shallow water. And by shallow water, five feet or less is what I consider shallow. But again, big fish, big fish often stay deep. I caught two five pounders this fall and both of them were in 15 feet of water on a rock pile. Uh, offshore structure, kind of the same thing. Uh, rock, rock piles, brush piles, points. It's uh, fall fishing is very similar to summer fishing. The only thing that I would say different is uh, you, you just want to, like I said, you want to fish the conditions. So if it's cloudy, you want to go shallow because the fish will move. Uh, but if it's sunny outside, you want to stay deep. Always stay deep for the big fish. The one thing that I always say about big fish is there's a reason why they're big. It's because they're smart. They haven't been caught often. No one's kept them yet, and they know how to find bait fish to eat. So if they're smart, they're not going to go super shallow. They know that's where all the lures are. They know that's where all the predator fish are. So they're going to stay deep and they're going to hide from lures, whatever. So they're smart. Uh, that's why I always say, you know, you always got to fish deep. So now I talked about where to go on the lakes, how to find the lakes, that kind of stuff. Now, it's, now I'm going to break it down into three categories, top water, middle, which are all the moving baits, and then bottom baits. So to start, so these are all going to be lures that I use to catch just big fish, not numbers. You may only catch one fish during the day, but it might be a master angler. So these are the lures that I like to use. Hollow body frog. If you watch my YouTube videos, you know that I like throwing a hollow body frog. It's my favorite lure of all time. I catch a ton of fish on it. Places that, or times that you want to throw a frog, low light conditions. The thing with about a bass or fish in general is they don't, their, uh, their eyes don't adjust to light like ours do. So if you're in a dark room and you walk outside and it's sunny, it really hurts your eyes, but your eyes eventually adjust to it. They don't have that. They, their eyes constantly hurt if it's in that sunlight. That's why you always catch them under, in shade, under dock, stuff like that. Or if it's cloudy, that's why they move shallow because their eyes don't get hurt. So low light conditions, shallow water, five feet or less. If you're fishing that lure in 20 feet of water, you're probably not gonna get a bite. Thick vegetation. Around here, you always get grass and weeds in the summer. If you fish any of the lakes around here, there's always, especially like Lawrence Youngman, if you've ever been there, it's, the entire lake is just covered with weeds. It's really hard to throw any other lure but something like this. And I'll pass a couple of these around just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So the next lure is a double buzz bait. This is different than your normal buzz bait. A normal buzz bait only has one of these blades. A double buzz bait has two of them. This is a lure I hardly ever see anybody throw. But it's one of those lures that you may only catch two fish during after, throughout the day, but they're going to be big fish. Uh, again, low light conditions since it is top water. Anytime you're fishing top water, low light conditions. So if it's cloudy, it's rainy, it's uh, early in the morning, right when the sun's coming up, or late at night when the sun's just going down. Again, shallow water, five feet or less. You don't want to throw this in deep water. Sparse vegetation and cover. By sparse, I mean just little clumps of grass here and there, little trees here and there, because with all that metal and all those turning, uh, components. If you throw it in grass, it's just going to get bogged down. And I'll pass this one around too. One other thing with uh, this buzz bait is if you guys ever thrown a, uh, you'll see it when it comes around. 
They're, uh, they're little top water toads. They're uh, like soft plastics. I put that on there as a trailer. It just really bulks up the lure itself instead of just leaving it plain like this. So you'll see that when it comes around. That's just another tip I never see anybody do is put a frog on the back of it. And then a large walking bait. Walking baits are spooks, poppers, any type of hard top water lure. Again, low light condition, shallow or deep water. This is something to keep in mind with these walking baits is you don't have to always do it shallow like these guys. The reason because is because it's very loud. So when you're fishing in deep water, if the fish is down 15 feet, he can't hear a frog all the way out there. It's, very, it's a very silent lure. This sounds like this, they have beads and rattles and they make a lot of commotion. So this is something you can throw in deep water, especially if they're schooling fish. Um, if you see, if you're out on the lake and it's super calm and you see shad flickering on top of the water, this is something that you want to try to throw. And uh, open water, there's three trebles on something like this. One, two, three. So it's not something you want to throw where there's a bunch of grass or anything like that because you're just going to get caught up. I'll pass this one around as well. Okay, so those are my top waters. Uh, those are all the lures that I use, the top three lures that I use to catch just big fish in general. Now moving baits. So this is for when it's just a little cloudy, not, not real dark outside, maybe it's sunny. These are the lures that I use. And this first one is a hollow belly, hollow belly swim bait. The thing with a swim bait is if you watch any YouTube video, ask any professional bass fisherman, one lure to catch a trophy sized bass, it will be this lure right here. It's a swim bait. It, I, that picture that I showed you guys at the beginning of the presentation, seven and a half pound bass, caught it on a swim bait. That's, it's the number one lure. You're not gonna get hardly any bites throughout the day. You may not even catch a fish if you throw it all day long. But when you do get bit, it's going to be the biggest bass in the lake. Uh, it's a, just a giant presentation. I'll hold it up and then I'll pass it around a little bit. But you can see, this looks like something you would actually catch but it's the lure itself. So it's just, it's something big. You, you don't have to throw something quite that large. You can size it down a little bit. Uh, but the thing about this is it's a very slow retreat. So you don't want to throw it out there and you don't want to burn it in really fast. You just want to slowly crawl along the bottom, just make it look like it's just kind of hanging out. And then if it goes right in front of a bass, it'll hit it. The thing with big bass is they are very territorial. So if, they are, if there's one big stump in the water and there's a big bass on it, it doesn't want anything near it. If it's, if it's a fish, if it's a crawfish, anything, it will eat it just to get it away. It's not even hungry. This poses a threat. That looks like another fish coming into his little area until they hit it because they don't want it there. Next thing, uh, I guess next lure, is a uh, big crankbait. And there's two different crankbaits I like to throw around here. So one's a square bill and one is a deep diver. They are completely opposite. Square bills are for five feet and less, like water depth. And deep crankbaits can go as far as down as 30 feet deep. So it all depends on how deep the water that you're actually fishing. But big crankbaits, by big crankbait, I mean something like this. It's very big, makes a lot of noise. You can pass this one around as well. Don't hook yourself. Um, and this is when you would throw it in the summertime. That's, that's probably the number one lure for catching big bass in the summer. And the reason being is because bass are usually very deep, like I was saying before. They're in the creek channels. They're on the channel swings. That lure right there will go down to 30 feet deep. That's very deep. I mean, you have to have a ton of line out, but it will. So anytime you're fishing in the summer, you want to throw something like this. The thing with this, this is a slow retrieve. So if the bass are not very active, they're kind of sluggish, you don't see like them chasing anything, you want to throw a swim bait. But if you see them chasing shad around, you know, being real territorial, you want to throw a crank bait. The reason being is because you, it's a very fast retreat. You throw it out there and you bring it back as fast as you possibly can, usually grinding it around rocks. Because if a bass is sitting by a rock and that crank that comes by and hits the rock and deflects, it looks like it's injured, it looks like it's not swimming correctly, and then they eat it because they think it's an easy meal. The last middle moving bait is a big spinner bait. I'm sure if you guys have been bass fishing for a couple years now, you've seen or used a lure like this, the spinner bait. It's a staple in everybody's tackle box. By big, I don't mean this being big, I mean the blades. Those blades are very large and they make them actually bigger than this. But to me, this is a big spinner bait. Anything with large blades, because each one of these blades looks like a fish, it looks like a little bait fish. And so that whole thing, that's a, pre that's a pretty big lure right there in and of itself. Plus you can add a trailer if you want to to even bulk it up even more. Um, places you want to throw this, shallow muddy water. So this crankbait, this is for deep water. The swim bait, I forgot to mention, you only want to throw that swim bait when it's clear water. You don't want to throw it into deep. Reason being is because it doesn't make any sound, it doesn't have any rattles, it doesn't displace a lot of water. If the water's dirty, the bass cannot see that lure right there. So if you fish around here, the water's normally dirty. That's, it's always pretty dirty. Springtime it may be a little clear, but for the most part it's pretty dirty. That's when you pick up something like this. You want to throw it in shallow muddy water, 
if you're fishing and there's trees and lay down, so there's we have a lot of trees around lakes around here. If you look at uh, Wanahoo or Prairie Queen, any lakes like that, there's tons of trees. That's when you pick up something like this and uh, you want to throw it with a very slow retrieve. So something like the crankbait, like I said, you want to throw it fast. This one, you just want to throw it and you want to bring it as slow as you possibly can. It just looks like a couple bait fish swimming past the bass uh, and it, it gets a lot of bites. It's one of the best lures for catching new bass, especially around here. One thing to keep in mind, with any, this goes for any bass fishing lure ever. You always want to hit stuff. If there's a log in the water, if there's a, if there's a log right on this corner right here, and I cast my lure, I want my lure to hit that log as hard as I possibly can. So you want to bring it and hit it. It may get stuck, it may not, but that's when you are going to get your bites. You don't want to throw your lure and bring it through just open water. You're not going to get very many bites. You want to hit things. Uh, the reason, because it just gets the bass's attention. Like I said, if there's, if there's a log right there and there's a big bass down below it and you hit it, he thinks it's messing up his little territory and then that's when he hits it. That, that's just another tip just to get more bites. Um, same thing with the spitter bait. Start and stop a tree, so don't just throw it out there and wind it in. Go fast, go slow, make it flutter, make it sink, come up to the surface. Very erratic. So those are the lures for the middle. So if you can't catch anything on the top, if it's sunny outside, you want to go down to the bottom. That's where a lot of bass hang out, especially in the summer. So if you're looking at summertime fish, this is the stuff that you want to use. This is a big jig. And a skirted jig looks something like this. There's a trailer on there. Um, I think I go over colors in a little bit. If not, I'll make sure to touch on that. Places you want to throw a big jig are rock piles. Like I said, I caught two five-pounders this fall. Both of them were on jigs. Both of them are on rock piles. That's just where they hang out. Especially in the summer, they always hang out on rock piles as well. Uh, rock piles, trees and laydowns. It's another thing. There's brush and water, um, whether it's shallow or deep. If you go to Lake Cunningham, they've got tons of brush piles sunk about 20 feet deep. Every tournament that I've ever fished at Cunningham has been one on the lure just like that. Every single one. And it's usually black and blue. So if you're thinking about good colors for a jig, throw a black and blue. Uh, but they always, they're always one on deep brush piles on a jig, something like that. The thing I like about a jig is it's a bulky presentation. Something like this is not a very small lure. It's very big. Like I said about that swim bait, it's a big lure, it poses a threat. Same thing, that's usually big baits catch big fish. That's, a, that's usually kind of my go-to. Sometimes you can catch big fish on small lures. Most of the time you want to throw big stuff. Next one is a big Texas rig soft plastic. If you've been bass fishing for a little bit, you probably have seen something like that little setup right there. Not, not the worm itself, but with a little weight and a hook going down there. That's called a Texas rig. If you don't know what it is, you need to write it down and go YouTube it tonight because that lure is always tied on year round. What I mean by big is usually worms that look like this. This to me, that's a big worm. I think this is like 12, 14 inches. Um, it's big presentation, and you may think it's a little too big, but it's not. You can catch a lot of fish on something like that, especially in the summer if you go to Wanahoo. Uh, this right here, that's one of my favorite lures to use. The thing about a Texas rig is it never gets hung up. You can throw it in brush, you can throw it in grass, you can throw it on rocks, and very few times will you ever have to break it off. So versus a jig, jigs often do get caught up because they just have that little weed guard. This, the hook is buried inside of that plastic right there. So you can throw it against trees and laydowns, rock piles, and vegetation. Around here, there's always a lot of vegetation. There's, there's uh, grass clumps everywhere, especially in the summer. This is one lure that you can throw. My favorite place to throw this is probably uh, in trees. You go to Prairie Queen, you go to Wanahoo, any place where there's just trees scattered everywhere, a lure like this usually works pretty well. And then, if you cannot get bites on any of the lures I've been going through, you want to throw a shaky head worm. And if you're going for big fish, you want to throw a big shaky head worm. Where you want to throw a big shaky head worm is clear water. The thing with this is it doesn't have a lot of movement. That ribbon tail right there, it spins in the water, it twirls, it makes movement. That does not have a spinning tail. It just, it just kind of floats, it flutters, it doesn't make a lot of movement. So you don't want to throw it in dirty water because the fish aren't going to know it's there. When the bass are finicky, like I said, if you can't catch it on anything else, pick up something like this, a shaky head worm, and I'll pass one around a little bit. And the place that I like to throw the most is probably rock piles. Again, big fish always hang on rock piles. I don't know if it's just here, uh, but I mean, I've traveled all across the country fishing and rock piles just seem to hold the biggest fish for whatever reason. There's just a lot of uh, forage in rock piles. Crawfish hide under rocks, bait fish hide under rocks or near rocks. That just seems to be a good place to catch them. And uh, so this is a big shaky head. That's what I mean by big shaky head. And you'll see that it's basically just a little jig head. And, uh, I usually start off with probably a 12 inch worm. The thing with that is if you buy something like that, 
and maybe the fish aren't biting on a long lure like that, you can always just cut it in half and just use the back half of it. So you can always size it up and down by buying a simple lure like that. Uh, I should have had you go through questions before. How do you determine colors on frogs? Yep, that's, I see that's another thing I should have gone on. So colors for frogs, I went over this, I believe, yesterday. Um, I usually always throw something this, uh, that's natural color. Usually frogs are colored green and they have a white belly or a yellow belly. The thing that don't let manufacturers trick you, a fish cannot see all those fancy spots on the top. Right. They can't see those eyes, they can't see that little dot right there, they can't see all the pretty patterns. Lures are manufactured to catch fishermen and not fish. They always make them look very pretty. And all a fish sees is that bottom. If you look at that frog that I passed around, or I can grab another one. All the fish sees is this. It looks white. That's all the so I could have an all white frog and it'll look exactly the same. They can't see any of those fancy patterns right there. This is just to make you buy the lure. That's all it is. They can only see that bottom. So I usually stick to white bottoms or yellow bottoms. Uh, another color I'll throw is black. That's usually a good time when um, if it's sunny outside, what happens is that sunlight's coming through. If you put a black lure there, it casts a, it casts a shadow, so it's easier to see for the fish.